When you build a custom subwoofer enclosure that is ported, you typically have two different options. You can do a slot port or you can do a round port. What's nice about slot ports is we generally use the same building materials as the rest of the box to create the walls of the port and the port easily becomes part of the enclosure. But what if we wanna use a round port? How can we mount the port and the side of the enclosure together? How can we prevent the end of the port from vibrating and flexing? How can we perfectly flare the ends of the port for smooth airflow in a quick, easy way that doesn't require a heat gun and forming the PVC? I'm Mark, welcome to Car Audio Fabrication, the show where together we learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install our dream car audio system. And that, my friends, is coming on up. Before we get started with adding our port to our demo box here, I do wanna take a quick second to thank our monthly channel sponsor, Audio Control, and show you guys the new ACX lineup of amplifiers. So this is Audio Control's all-weather lineup of amplifiers, and right now the line has these two amps in it. There's a mono block, so single channel there for a subwoofer type application, and then a four channel amplifier for your speakers. I've got the ACX-300.4 out here to show you guys, and these are IPX6 rated, which makes them great for all sorts of different applications that are going to be exposed to the elements. To make this an all-weather amplifier, you can see that they have this sealed cover plate here. This covers all the different tuning settings for the amplifier, and you can see that they also have these pigtails for all the RCA connections, along with the main power connections and the outgoing signal. If we look even more closely, we can see that all of these connections are on Molex plugs, which allows us to quickly detach this and service things if need be, which is very beneficial for an all-weather type application. There's a ton more features to look at here on these. If you guys wanna learn more, check out the link down in the video description. Let's get back into adding our port. Now, the first thing that we're gonna assume here is that we're obviously building a ported enclosure. I've just mocked up three different sides here to show you guys these advanced techniques, but this allows me to make a really good first point. You want to do this stuff for mounting the port before you completely finish the enclosure. It's a common mistake I see. People will build all six sides of the box and then they decide to cut out that hole and then they're trying to determine how they're gonna mount this port and have it look good. Don't make that mistake. We want to attach the port while we still have access inside. First things first here, how are we going to mount this to this side of the enclosure? Well, to get that process started, we of course have to cut out our center hole that matches the inner diameter of our port. So I've measured my PVC piece here and this is a four inch inner diameter. So the hole that I'm gonna need to make is also going to be obviously four inches. To make the cutout hole, I'm gonna be using this circle template on the router, but what if you had to use a jigsaw? I wanna show you guys a cool little trick to get a nice perfect circle. To draw a perfect circle that we can cut out using a jigsaw, we first want to mark out the center location of our port, and that would be based off where we want the tube to actually sit and make sure that we have enough room to each side. Next, we can just take an old piece of cardboard and we'll poke one hole in it for our pencil lead, and then we'll measure half of the diameter, which is the radius. So in this case, I'm going to do four divided by two. That's two inches. I'm measuring that out and poking that push pin through. That will now be the center of this hole when I go and draw the circle using the pencil. Now, of course, I can drill a starter hole for the jigsaw blade and then carefully use the jigsaw to cut out that circle. If you were just using the jigsaw with no router, you'd really want to take your time here. But in my case, I'm just going to go really quickly and cut, leaving some extra material for the router to remove. So now I can bust out one of my good old rolls of template tape. I'm going to apply that to the back side of the template and then stick the template to the piece of wood. I've got a straight flute flush trim bit loaded up here in the router. So this bearing on top is gonna ride against the template. The cutting flute will cut the wood. Let's make this pass. So using the router really allows us to be precise and now we have this perfectly made circle that matches the inner diameter of our port. Now this is where people, like I said before, they get mixed up. They try to do something weird to mount this. They might stick it against it and put a bunch of adhesive around the outside or they cut this hole, the outside size of the pipe, which leads to you trying to make sure that you can seal the outside of this perfectly. We're gonna do something a little bit different. Like I already said, the inside of this matches 
matches the ID, the inner diameter of the port. So what we need to do is we need to add a little bit of a clearance step in order for this to slide down in. The way that we can do this is we can use a rabbiting bit on the router. If we flip the rabbiting bit over, you can see that that bearing is gonna ride against that hole that we already created. So it's gonna keep that, but it's going to cut a step into the wood. The dimension of that step that we need to cut needs to match the thickness of the wall of our pipe. Now I've measured this and in this case, this is one eighth of an inch. So I've got a one eighth inch rabbiting bit loaded up from this particular tray of tools here. Now I do wanna point out, this is a high-end router bit tray. By having each of these different options available, I can quickly load one in and be ready to go, all about efficiency. But if you are just getting started with custom car audio, I always recommend this tray of bits first. This is the Eco Tray from Mobile Solutions. And you can see that this includes different bearings, which gives us a ton of different flexibility, in particular when we needed to make this 1 8 inch router rabbit cut, we could just load this bearing onto the rabbit bit, which takes a little bit more time, but when you're getting started and you have limited tools, this is definitely the way to go. So moral of the story, this bit from this tray here is going to do the exact same cutting pass as if I were to put that bearing on this. It just saves me some more time because I don't have to load the bearing. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna raise this bit up a little bit. I'm gonna make it so that it's cutting into about half the distance of this board. And I'm gonna make sure that I'm cutting the inside of the board, which is this side here. I'm gonna put it here and make my cutting pass. So check it out. Now we have that nice notch on the inside there. And if we take our port, it's gonna fit into that first hole, but not go past that. It's in there looking good. So now the other advantage of this is when we go to apply some adhesive, I'm gonna use some CA glue to glue this wood to this PVC. It's not only going to have surface area on this bottom ring here, but also around the outside. So lots of surface area there for us to attach the two together. Before we glue the two together, I like to rough up the PVC with some sandpaper just to give it a little bit more bite. Then I take my CA glue and I carefully run a bead of the glue around the pipe and then I'm gonna spray some activator on the wood and attach the two together. We've got a good solid bead of CA glue around the outside there sealing things up. You could of course also use some silicone caulk but in this case, I'm going with that CA glue and you can see that we have a little bit of bleed through here, but that's no big deal because there's something else I wanna do here. Obviously, because this is a port for our subwoofer, we're gonna have air oscillating back and forth in and out of this port here. So we want to make the airflow as smooth as possible and to have a 90 degree bend here for the air to kind of go around isn't optimal. We wanna smooth this out. Now we could of course painstakingly take our time with sandpaper and sand away forever, but instead, again, Again, we're going to turn to our trusty router. Right here, I have a roundover bit. I want to use a nice large roundover bit like this three quarter inch roundover right here to have as much smoothness as possible. And in order to do that, I needed to make sure that these two pieces were attached together before we can make that pass. The bearing on top of the bit here is going to, in this case, ride on the inside of this port, and this is going to clean up all this extra glue. It's going to make sure that this edge of the wood is perfectly flush with the inside of the port. It's gonna give us a really nice finish. In this case, because it's going to be covered, you're not gonna be able to see the cutting pass, but let's get it done. Check it out guys, we've got this really nice perfect result here now. Now the pipe is perfectly flush with our piece of wood. We've obviously got this nice round over for the air to flow over. That bit even did cut into that PVC a slight amount, which is just fine because it really meshes the two together. So this is looking really nice. All right, so far so good. So now we can mount the side of the enclosure and build the rest, right? Well, not quite yet. The next thing I want to attack here is if you think about it, this end of the port not being supported, it can easily vibrate because this is such a long kind of moment arm. This is something else that I rarely see addressed when people make these pipe style ports. We wanna give ourselves some kind of end support here. The explanation here is similar to the steps that we've already taken before, so I'll shut up and cue the build montage.
So much like the outside hole of the box, this inside hole for the port here really came together nicely, nice and flush, nice and smooth. So now we can take this whole assembly and we can position it. We could then of course attach the side of our box along with attaching this to the back and bottom. But check that out guys. What do you guys think of that? Another thing to really consider here is if our port was extra long, I mean, this is a nice stout piece of PVC. So in this case, this is pretty good to go. But if it was longer, you could even have that hole be cut to the outer diameter of this pipe and you can make a support right here as well, just like I did with this one. Another cool thing you could do with this technique here is let's imagine that our subwoofer was in this orientation facing forward this direction. Let's imagine that you wanted to add some bracing because of course you're gonna have that large cutout hole. You wanna make it nice and strong. Let's say you're gonna have some bracing coming from the back here to the front, back to the front, some window style bracing. You could even incorporate that hole that also holds up this port into that bracing design. So hopefully next time you're building a custom subwoofer enclosure that includes a round port, you will find these techniques helpful. I'd love to hear from you guys. It really makes my day and it makes it more motivating to make these videos when I hear from you guys, so let me know what you think. Don't forget to check out show sponsor Audio Control's new lineup of all weather amplifiers, the ACX series. Again, you can check out the links down in the video description. A special thanks to them along with Bryson, Mike Ali, Jerry, Marcos, William, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all those guys for making these videos possible. Thank you dudes for watching.